Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a sneak preview for you of something that's really, really cool that I, I wanted to show off before they uh, sell out in the first run here. Um, to start with, um, first off, I guess full disclosure, this guy was sent to me by the manufacturer. That's right, Pena Knives, Enrique Pena himself, uh, reached out to me, said, hey Nick, do you want to check one of these guys out? I said, absolutely freaking yes, but I sent him my disclaimer, as always, told him I'm talking about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly, might be a gem, might be junk. Still sent it along, uh, we have to assume this is the best quality controlled one of these ever, and I'm doing my best not to let this affect my review. But anyways, with that said and that put aside, I want to talk about this little guy right here. Um, Many of you might remember this pocket knife right here. This is a member of my permanent collection. In fact, this is my only high-end custom handmade knife. Um, th th This is a Pena Knives front flipper trapper. It is a wonderful, wonderful little knife. It is a marriage of a very traditional sensibility with the, the shield, with the, the materials, etc., with some very decidedly modern features, like for instance a line of lock lockup mechanism. It's running on, on bearings. And a uh, beautifully smooth, by the way. Um, and it has a, a front flipper opening. It's just the, the modern steels, etc. This is, to me, one of the nice effusions of a modern sensibility with a, a traditional sort of style in a pocket knife. And this is something that I, I really, really like. And in fact, of all the knives that I have in my collection, this is the one that people most at regularly message me saying, hey, Nick, is it for sale? Is it for sale? The answer is no, by the way. So you can stop. But anyways, a lot of people have been clamoring for this knife, and uh, I think Enrique heard him, and uh, came up with this instead. This is a production knife. This is from the Pena X-Series. X-Series sounds like something you'd stay up late at night to watch on TV, but nevertheless, X-Series is his production lineup. This is his, These are the knives that are made in production, not directly by Enrique, but sold by Enrique himself, and this is a version of this knife that is a production pocket knife. That's really, really cool. As a custom knife owner, as an owner of one of the customs, that is, I absolutely freaking love this. Because Enrique has done a couple of things that are very interesting. So what I wanted to do real quick as part of this kind of sneak preview thing is to talk a little bit about how these two differ and how they're similar and then, then give a, a couple of little conclusions here. So um, to start with, in terms of the similarities, they are actually remarkably similar. If I put these guys up next to each other, um, from the surface... Size-wise, they feel like they're pretty much identical. Um, the, the overall dimensions and whatnot, maybe there were slight differences there, but by and large, they, they feel almost exactly the same. The grind on them, although I definitely, uh, you can see that there's a little bit more smoothness to Enrique's version, and the blade has a nicer satin to it. Um, Smoothness-wise, they're very, very similar in that. I'm sorry, uh, grind-wise, they're very similar. This guy does have a nail nick, for what it's worth. Um, And you can see here that this features a micarta, and this features actually two different micartas. Um, and so that's cool. One other big similarity to them is the action. Both of these are really, really nice front flippers. The uh, the, the, the Rayot one here, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the X-Series one here, it is made by Rayot for what it's worth, has an action is a slightly harder to tent. And combined with this pocket clip, which gives you easy purchase like this, makes it much, something that really wants to be flipped out like this, sort of like a more conventional front flipper, whereas this guy, you can definitely do that with that, but I actually prefer to deploy it using my index finger, a lot like that. This detents a little bit harder for that. But in terms of the action, both of them are, uh, well, very nice. The, 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 the custom is smoother, because, well, it's a high-end custom knife. One would kind of hope it was smoother. But by and large, um, in terms of your similarities, in terms of your action, in terms of your front flipping and sort of things... They are very, very remarkably similar. However, there are some really important differences to keep in mind, some of them favoring each side. Um, one of the big differences, in fact, the biggest difference is the locking mechanism. This guy is, uh, the, the, the custom that is, is a line of lock knife. You can see that there are uh, micarta bolsters on uh, both sides there, and that the uh, the, the liner is a, a, an integral part of that. Although it's still titanium liner, you can see there's a slight difference there. You can also see differences in the finish of the titanium, etc. Again, there's no mistaking which one of these is the high end piece. But nevertheless, this guy, on the other hand, is a bolster lock, meaning you've got a bolster, or I'm sorry, you've got scales right here, and then you've got a frame lock style thing going on there. And so, although functionally they perform more or less identically, that, that is a difference. I'll also say that the grind on the Pena is, as you might expect, coming from a custom knife maker, a little bit thinner, a little bit nicer. Um, overall, you can see at the tip level, they're both uh, customs just a little bit thinner. I, I, I do prefer the custom grind a little bit as well. One of the major difference between these two is that the production one actually includes a pocket clip, whereas I elected not to have a pocket clip on my uh, on the custom one. 
production one throws that on there. Now, for me, I actually enjoy carrying the custom in a slip, so it doesn't actually matter to me. Um, and in fact, having the pocket clip might be a little bit of a hindrance there. But it, I can definitely see for a lot of people having the pocket slip might, or I'm sorry, having the pocket clip, that is, might actually make this guy a little bit more useful. And certainly as you're front flipping it like this, having that pocket clip for a little extra purchase does definitely make a difference. And so that's definitely something that's, um, well, something to keep in mind, so to speak. If you love a clip, then the production one is absolutely the way to go. And that's pretending, by the way, that you could get one of the custom ones. They are very, very hard to get. Maybe the biggest difference is price. This is a very expensive knife. You are, you know, and again, they're, they're not regularly in production, so giving a... But you're looking at well north of like seven, eight hundred bucks for one of these guys right here. Whereas this guy actually has a price... That, oh, and by the way, um, uh, sorry, one of the big de uh, difference here. Steel on this guy is CPM 154. Great steel. Good to go for everyday carry. This is M390 which is arguably, chemically speaking, if it's heat-treated well, a better steel than that. And so actually the production version has the edge if you're a uh, steel snob version. But one of the biggest differences, probably the biggest difference, is that this guy is both very hard to get, being a custom knife that Enrique's not making a whole bunch of, but also, maybe even more importantly, it is much, much more expensive. The custom version came in, like I said, seven or eight hundred bucks. Production one, two seventy-five. <laughs> That is a price that is, in my estimation, good. It is a very, very good price. Um, the knife itself is not very big. In fact, I should do a quick size comparison here. Um, you can see here that next to the Spyderco Delica, it's a, it's a relatively small knife here, right? Next to PM2, etc. But honestly, at that price, I really don't have a whole heck of a lot of objection here. What Enrique has done here, I think, is actually a very nice balancing act. Because I can see a world, and as a custom knife owner, uh, a custom owner of this guy, that is, a couple of people have messaged me like, Nick, are you mad? Are you, like, uh, did these devalue? what you're doing. I actually don't think he really has, because the, the, the production version is actually different enough that they're, that they're not the same knife. This guy is a bolster lock. This one is a liner lock. The, the production, I'm sorry, the custom is smoother. The grind's a little bit better. The finishing is, in terms of technical craftsmanship and mastery, the custom one definitely wins. But as a practical everyday tool, the production one, I can say, is just as good, if not even a little bit better. I generally hate nail nicks, but it does make this guy a little bit op easier to open without front flipping. But anyway, Anyways, I really, really, really am impressed with this little knife right here. Um, I, I, you know, you all know that I absolutely freaking love this custom version. I was a little bit afraid that the production one wasn't going to live up to the height, that they would get the detent wrong, and they would screw some element of it up, that the, the grind would be stupidly thick, or that there would be some major problem with it, or just that it would be too expensive. I didn't know that at the time, but I'm actually very, very impressed. In terms of, uh, you know, uh, I've talked a lot about the good because it's mirroring the good here, and uh, the, the M390 upgrade, that's definitely a nice thing, and frankly, it's just, it's a nice piece in general having the clip on there. In terms of negative things, and again, this is a quick review because I wanted to get this out there because I gather, I imagine they're all going to sell out pretty quickly tomorrow, so I want to give people a shot. But nevertheless, um, this is a really, really, really nice knife. The only things that I would really object to is that this little corner right up at the top here, it's a little sharper than maybe I'd like it to be. And so if you're bearing down in the right position, you can get a little bit of hot spot right off of this here as well as off of there. And then um, I, I, the micarta itself does not potentially particularly without any oil or anything in it. It looks a little bit chalky and whatnot, but that'll definitely patina up over time. That's the beautiful thing about micarta. As you carry it more, it tends to, you know, it looks a little prettier. But nevertheless, um, aside from that, really, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this little knife. And in fact, the last thing I want to do, and I'll just sort of keep talking as I do this, is just to do my disassembly and maintenance on it real quick, just to make sure that everything's looking good, that we don't have any... Uh, any problems in that domain. We do have a free spinning pivot here, uh, which appears to be a T8, which I'm not super in love with, but you know what? Hey, so it is what it is. Is that T9? Or is that T10? Maybe that's T10. It seems awfully big for a tiny knife. Eh, it's T10. I'll be damned. Okay. Um. Anyways, so... I, I'm really actually happy to see this because the, the, the biggest problem with a lot of custom knives and especially a lot of these really creative custom knives from higher end makers is that, you know, they can make something that's absolutely amazing. A bunch of people want, but if they don't actually, you know, um, what am I trying to say here? They don't make enough of them. No one can freaking get them. And so actually having, making something like this available as a just daily availability production sort of knife is a beautiful thing. My understanding is there's going to be a limited run here to start with, but I'm hoping very much that Enrique will, um, 
you know, re renew it for future rounds, so to speak. I think he's going to have a hit on his hands here, and I, I very, very much hope that he's... Uh, uh, now the question is, which side do I go in for? I think this becomes T8. Yeah, that's T8. I'm going to try coming out of this side first. But I really hope he renews this for future versions so that other people... Or I'm sorry, for future runs, that is, after he sells out the initial batch, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, okay, great. Um, uh, That way I can get to this other side here. It's kind of a flip-flop disassembly, but whatever. This looks like T6. So I'll pop this apart. There we go. Pop that loose. And though pop this loose. I really hope he makes multiple runs of these guys, because I really do think this is going to be kind of a hit. Um, it's the, the original custom version was just so damn good. And now seeing that it's been done really well as a production knife, oh boy, I think he's going to have no trouble uh, selling this batch down. Mind you, this video probably ain't going to help that. I'm going to go ahead and use my little spudget tool to pop this scale loose. It looks like there's a little... Um, See, this little pin right here doesn't appear to be going through to the other side, so unless that's a screw, and I don't believe that it is, because things are lifting off a little bit already, um, we should be able to pop this guy loose without a whole bunch of trouble. But I'm not using too much force here. I'm using this little plastic spudget tool to try and pop this apart. Yeah, we're slowly making progress here. Anyways, um, I'm... Very, very happy to see this. I know, like I said, there will be some subset of custom collectors who feel like their, 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 their you know, fancy Pena, you know, front flipper trapper is no longer quite as special, quite as unique. But honestly, I feel like if I can opine for a second here, this is actually a very good move. There we go. Pop that loose. Oh, boy, this appears to be running on, like, chicken grease or something like that. Let's go on ahead and uh, clean everything up on, in here. Hopefully this will run even a little bit better after we're done. But, um, look, I, I really like seeing this approach. Because what Enrique has done, he's not recreated exactly. He didn't just, like, send this knife to Rayot and say, make more of them. I think that would be a little unsatisfying. I think that might leave the custom owners feeling maybe a little bit miffed. They're feeling just like, you know, dude, we supported your art, and now you're just going to making the same thing for a whole lot less money. And given you can make something for a lot less money if you're not doing it by hand anymore, and if you're doing it overseas rather than in your shop in Texas. But nevertheless, um, I think that might have felt a little bit off. That might have felt pretty unpleasant. But the way that he did this, of creating something that is, spiritually speaking, and I, I probably sound like a gushing fanboy right now, but honestly, this is the kind of thing that I think we should all be gushing fans of. Really, really excellent knife-making work, um, unique designs, etc., and bringing something that was hard to get to the masses. But anyways, I, I uh, making something that is subtly different from the original, uh, the original custom piece, that is, um, but which is also, well, I, uh, equally compelling, I would argue, and I think for many people, especially given the price point, way more compelling. I think there are going to be a lot of people who might never consider doing the full custom version, but who would very easily, and who would be, frankly, smart to consider doing this production one. Um, because this is a really, really excellent gentle person's knife, so to speak. Um, this this is going to work really great for folks like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and pop this, or, uh, clean this off here. Very, very, very happy with this guy. Um, again, I there's always this line as I'm doing this, and I'm sorry, I'm ranting a little bit here, but there's always this line between wanting to, uh, you know, appear completely impartial and neutral and whatnot, but also being very, very enthusiastic about when people are doing things right. I really decidedly feel like this this effort here and the way that Enrique is handling this is doing this right. Um, you know, making sure that they, 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 my impression from talking to him is that it's not like a limited edition, one and done sort of thing. Um, this really feels exactly like this should be being done. And so I, I'm super jazzed about that. And I really do want to support it. That's part of the reason that I'm filming this video so quickly. That and about the fact that I posted this knife on Instagram this afternoon. Everybody and their freaking mother was up on me. First impressions! Give me your first impressions! Um, and so here you go, folks. And then at the end, this is going to serve as a disassembly video. So, uh, yeah. Greetings, people in the future who are coming back to watch this again. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and use some nano oil here. If you're ever curious about any of the tools I'm using for my disassemblies, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools. You'll get a better sense of exactly what, I, uh, what I'm using here. But okay, um, we can pop this, drop this into place right now. Oh, hold on, let me lubricate the pivot. Internally, no surprises here. There's a ceramic lock bar. It's fine, not really.
really a problem. Um, there we go. Beautiful nets in place. Now, next up is going to be this right here. A little bit of lubrication there. A little bit of lube in the detent ball hole. That might actually lighten that detent up a little tiny bit and allow me to flip it the same way that I am uh, accustomed to with my original. And there we go. Just rotate, rotate, rotate. I think I already plugged the nickshabazz.com slash tools, but there you go. And now we can put this guy the rest of the way back together. This is a pleasure to do. Oh, and then it's got this alignment pin right here. That's nice. All right. So we'll go ahead and drop this into place and kind of pinch everything shut as best as I can. Oh. Need to remove the lock bar tension before that would work. All right, uh, where is my T10 driver? I love that it's T10 despite being a tiny little knife. Let me grab my, um, let me grab some Loctite here. Blue Loctite on a stick. Just that way it doesn't come apart once I finish doing this. I'll just kind of put this in here. And because I don't have everything in alignment yet, mostly my goal is just to keep this from coming apart on me. So we'll put that there. All right. Now what we're going to do is um, put in these two T6 screws. I don't really particularly need to use Loctite here because those screws aren't really coming out. Um, they're probably not coming loose, and even if they get a little tiny bit loose, um, because we have that locating pin right there, the, the scales aren't going to shift apart. So, Yet out of pure and total instinct, I go ahead and I put Loctite on the screws. It's amazing. You know, in case you were ever curious whether you were getting a sneak preview from a from a brilliant man or not, um, th th no, that I gave you the answer right there. You are not. Okay, this one I don't need Loctite on because, well, but now I feel like it's asymmetrical. And anyways, I digress. So, um, right now I don't need to put the bolster on yet because, well, the bolster's not on. I mean, uh, the, 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 the action works as it is. So I'll just tune the detent a little bit while it's in this position. Okay. Uh, let's turn it this way. Here we go. And get everything kind of in place. That might be a little too tight. That feels a little tight. So let me tighten or loosen this up just a little smidge. Okay. Still a little tight for that, but not a little tight for that. That might still be... Do we have any blade play? No blade play. That's good. I'll try loosening this up a little tiny bit. Uh, centering is right now a little tiny bit off, but that's because I had the pivot. Okay. Tension-wise, we're feeling just about right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these screws in the back here because I tightened them fully when the uh, pivot wasn't fully in position yet. And now let's re-tighten them and re-tighten them. Come on. There we go. Centering is right in position. Action is on point, and we are good to go. It's always weird to evaluate centering when the knife itself is asymmetrical, but that looks pretty damn good. Um, and then all I'll do is slide these guys into place here. So, final conclusion on this is not able to be done yet. I literally carried this for an afternoon. But given that they were about to, like I said, I suspect they were about to sell out, um, I figured I'd throw something up there at the very least for people to take a look at. Um, but anyways, I am uh, I am duly impressed. I, I am very, very happy to see Enrique doing this sort of thing. Not just the creation of production versions of some of his most compelling customs, but also the, the fact that he's doing them right. Um, he's not screwing over the custom owners, um, who spent the money to go the, the you know to support him as an artist, but he's also doing it. Uh, but he's also not uh, uh, kind kind of cheap it out and making the, the the production version something people aren't interested in. So that's it. Disassembly and maintenance um, for those of you who came to this video in in a great deal of time for that. But for the most part, I like I said, I am duly impressed. I I still am keeping my custom version. I like the custom, and frankly, it shows a little bit more of the handmade mastery. I think than uh, than the, the the production one. Although the production one is quite good. But if you are looking for this kind of a knife, if you are looking for a gentlemanly or gentlewomanly, so to speak, um, pocket knife 
life that is uh, very attractive, very interesting, and uh, absolutely a great piece for your everyday life, then this one may just trap you hot. So anyways, there you go. Um, I hope this has been interesting to you. Really, really well done, Enrique. And uh, keep making more of these, because I suspect these are going to go... Uh, these are going to sell out pretty quick. Anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.